Okay, next up, uh, we actually have a change from the schedule you guys have in the abstract. We're going to have a different talk, but the abstract is present in the manual. So, next we have Claudine Miseré. She's from Switzerland, and she's going to tell you exactly where she's from, so I don't murder the French. Um, but she's going to be presenting development, development and production of a support for dinosaur track-bearing slabs recovered from Highway A16 excavations, northwest Switzerland. So, hello everybody. As you heard, I'm from Switzerland and I had a very long trip to come here, but anyway, I'm very happy to be here to present to you this project. So, um, this project is the result of my bachelor thesis in conservation and restoration, uh, which I realized with the um, uh, Conservation and Restoration School of Neuchâtel in Switzerland, and also in collaboration with the County Office for Culture, um, and uh, the Paleontology A16, um, which is a paleontological survey project of this Office for Culture. The dinosaur track-bearing limestone slabs concerned by this project come from six large sites excavated during the construction of the Highway A16, which crosses the county of Jura, as you can see here. So this is Switzerland, this is the county of Jura, and this is the highway. Uh, these six sites have yielded more than um, 15 dinosaur tracks, uh, including 660 trackways. Um, these sites uh, were excavated between 2002 and 2011, and yeah, we consider they were really big for a small country like Switzerland. As these sites, a path one had to be covered up again to allow the highway to go through, almost 1,000 dinosaur tract, tracks were extracted, but the original limestone slabs in situ were globally cracked because of the normal faults and desiccation cracks, so um, we needed to consolidate the slabs before extracting them, and to do so, we glued a fiberglass cloth on their surface with a polyvinyl acetate glue called Mobilis 60. Uh, once the glue was dry, we um, separated the slabs along the normal folds and cracks using chisels and hammers, like on the second picture. And sometimes we had to cut them with a stone saw, but this was an, excep an exception. We also um, needed to carefully document the slabs, as you can see on the third picture. And afterwards, we, um, we extracted them by uh, putting iron bars beneath them and then lifting the iron bars. And um, finally, we stored them on wooden planks on top of each other, like on the fourth picture. They are still stored uh, this way today. The problem is that this fiberglass cloth, which holds together the sewn fragments, also hides the tracks, as you can see on this picture. Um, so we, to, to study and display those tracks, we needed to remove the fiberglass cloth, but, without, but to remove it without leaving uh, stone fragments of stone or the shape of the slab, we needed to replace the fiberglass cloth with a support on the lower surface of the slab. And we had to consider the irregularity of, the, of these slabs, uh, their weight, their shape, um, and the support also had to be discreet enough for display so that we wouldn't have to remove the support each time we want to display the slabs. The support we finally chose to produce is made of several parts listed, in, listed on this slide. So first of all, there is a um, um, layer of a mineral motor produced by a factory called Kaim. So, um, so excuse me, so this is this layer. Um, this motor is 99% mineral, so we consider it stable enough to avoid any damage to the stone. We also can remove it with a chisel and hammer without any damage to the stone, so it's reversible. And um, this mortar uh, is hard enough, but to avoid the spreading of possible cracks and the separation of mortar fragments, if ever it should break, we decided to uh, reinforce it with the fiberglass lattice, um, which we put while the mortar is still, is still fresh. This mortar is quite good, but it's non-resistant to torsion, so we, wanted to, we decided to reinforce it with the supporting plate, which is uh, this here. We glue, uh, well, we, we bond together 
the supporting plate with a mineral bonding layer also produced by this factory called Kaim. And the supporting plate itself is made of an aluminum plate of a thickness of two millimeters with a textured surface so that it, so that it holds better to the, to the mortar. But because two millimeters of aluminum is uh, not strong enough for many of the slabs, um, we decided to reinforce it with a three-ply for a wood panel glued to it with a polyurethane glue called Coltagam. So uh, this support is manufactured in several steps. Uh, first of all, the slabs are photographed and because they are stored upper face up, we need to turn them over. To do so, we can do it by hand if the slabs are neither too fragile nor too cumbersome, but usually we need a machine. So we use a hoist like the one uh, you have here in the big lab. So we put a second wood panel on the slab we uh, staple them, or we um, um, hold them together with uh, clamping sets like here. And we put an iron bar between the two wood panels so that we can hook um, the hoist to both extremities of the iron bar, like here. And then we lift everything up, we put it a bit aside, and then we turn the slab over while lowering everything on a wooden pallet. And it works quite well. It's not very long and we don't lose any fragments, so, yeah. Then we wash uh, the lower face of the slabs to remove the clays that could diminish the adhesion of the mortar to the stone. And we um, document the lower surface of the slabs. In the meanwhile, we can prepare the um, supporting plate. So we put a, a thin layer of the mineral bonding material produced by Kaim. We then wait two days until it's dry, and then we glue together the wood panel and the aluminum with, the, with a thin layer of coltagum. We then uh, draw the shape of the slab on a plastic sheet, like on this picture, um, with a margin of about two centimeters. Then we report the, this drawing on the supporting plate, and we cut it with a jigsaw. The supporting plate is uh, adapted to each sample so that we don't have any problem to put each slab um, side by side to reproduce the trackways as they were, as they were in situ. So um, we then moisten the lower face of the slabs to improve the adherence of the mortar uh, to the stone and we apply a first layer of mortar um, but the, the mortar is quite liquid so that it penetrates it goes into the cracks and holds together the stone fragments. This first layer of mortar is quite thin, uh, only a half, millimeter, uh, a half centimeter. We also uh, introduce um, fiberglass lattice with a travel, what gives us what you can see on the third picture. We let dry this first layer about one day so that it's hard enough to put the second layer of mortar. So uh, we moisten, moisten the first layer and then we put a sec this second layer, but this time the mortar is a bit less liquid so that it doesn't overflow too much, like here, when we put the supporting plate. Um, the second layer is about two centimeters thick. We then um, remove the overflowing mortar with a travel and we use mortar bags as weights. This mortar dries in about 10 days completely, but after two, after two days, depending on the climatic conditions, if the mortar is hard enough and the slab is not too big, we can um, turn them over again to carry on the work. So the slabs are consolidated. We can remo remove the fiberglass cloth, which was uh, glued to uh, the slab in the first place to hold them together. To do so, we use organic solvents, usually ethanol. We could use acetone, but it's too volatile. So, well, we use acet uh, ethanol. And we, re we remove the, um, the resin residues with uh, brushes and spatulas and other tools. And we don't mind if the resin migrates slightly into the stone because, as you can see here, it, it holds together all those small stone fragments that we would have to consolidate anyway, so, well, we don't mind. 
and uh, we glue uh, bigger fragments, stone fragments with the same motherless glue. But if they are really big or on the edge, we use um, the same mortar we use for the or to make the support. We then um, write the, the number of each slab uh, on the stone surface with an acrylic paint. We chose this acrylic paint because it's known for its stability and because it's reversible with water. And then we store the, the slabs on wooden pallets um, in metallic shelves like here. Uh, we lift them with a, with a forklift and yeah, it works quite well. So after six months, we can tell that this, we're quite satisfied with this procedure and the global concept. It allows us to, to move the slabs without any damage for them. We can display them, we can um, study them. The mortar is quite discreet, as you can see here. This is a mortar, but we don't see it. Well, it's not, well, it's discreet. And um, it's hard enough, so it doesn't break. Uh, it's still reversible, so yeah, we're quite happy with the mortar. But as nothing can be perfect, we had problems with the supporting plate, which separates from the mortar after about four or five months. And this is due to two things. First of all, the mineral bonding material used to, um, to um, glue the supporting plate to the mortar doesn't work, in spite of what guaranteed the producer. <laughs> well, we, we tested the whole procedure on the slab and it worked well, so we didn't expect it, would, it wouldn't work. And we didn't have time to wait, so, well, it's our fault, but anyway, it doesn't work. And um, the second problem is the wooden, uh, the wood panel here, because um, it moves um, due to the variations of humidity, and yeah, it makes move the, the aluminum plate too, so everything separates. So from now on, we will use only a thicker aluminum plate. It will be more expensive, but it will avoid this separation, and we will also um, stop using this mineral bonding material. We will wait until the mortar is dry, and then we will glue the supporting plate to the mortar with a synthetic glue. We are testing different glues, and it, it, well, we found several glues which work, but not this mineral bonding material. So uh, that's it. I must say that this project is not over. We have to improve it to to find better solutions, and we have to make compromises with many people, including the paleontologists and the people in charge of the budget. So uh, yeah, we have to make decisions, and it's not always easy, but it's also thanks to these people that this project is so motivating and fulfilling. So I want to thank them all, and also thank you for your attention.